like it. I'm cold, Maryland. <laughs> it's always cold in here. I know. Right? I don't know. They got that. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. My name is Felicia Hamilton and I will be your moderator for this session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield Michigan class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis. Our president is Dr. Edward Ewell, and our superintendent is Dr. Jarrell Lewis. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Greek language, the Hebrew language, nor the Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. 
In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function, <coughs> excuse me, of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. <coughs> excuse me. The primary aims and constitution objectives of the class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to, inc to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose operating throughout eternity through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in a new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we would like to have, a, have the <laughs> class dedicated in prayer by Sister Haley Baker, followed by scripture, which will be 2 Corinthians 4th and 5th chapter, read by Dr. Dewan Nelson. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> 
May you all bow our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. Thank you for everything, Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 I'll be reading uh, 2 Corinthians 4th and 5th chapter. I'll be reading uh, from the King James Version of the Bible, substituting the true and correct names. Can you hear me? Okay. I'll be reading, uh, substituting the true and correct names. 2 Corinthians 4th chapter. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom, in whom the masters of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the, of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of Elohim, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Yahshua the Messiah, and ourselves your servants for Yahshua's sake. For Yahweh who have commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of Yahshua the Messiah, that the life also of Yahshua may be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always, always deliver unto death for Yahshua's sake, that the life of Yahshua might be manifested in our mortal flesh. So that death worketh in us, but life in you. We, have, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up which raised up Yahshua shall raise us up also by Yahshua and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound, rebound, redound to the glory of Yahweh. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light, for our light affliction, which is but a moment, worketh for us a more far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Fifth, for we, now, for we know that our earthly house of his, this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of Elohim and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we, we, go, we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon the mortality might be swallowed up for life, swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is Elohim, who has who also has given us given unto us the earnest of his of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from Yahweh. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with Yahweh. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, 
that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Elohim, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer. Excuse me, have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be by ourselves, whether we be beside ourselves, it is to Yahweh, or whether be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of for the love of the Messiah constrained us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth now, henceforth know we, no man after the flesh, yea, though he, we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of Elohim, who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahshua the Messiah, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that Elohim was in the Messiah, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for the Messiah. As though Elohim did beseech you by us, we pray, you and the Messiah stead, be ye reconciled to Elohim, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Elohim in him. That was 2 Corinthians 4 to 5th chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Baker, for the prayer and Dr. Nelson for the scripture. We want to once again say good morning to everyone and thank you for coming out to join us today in person and on Zoom or YouTube. Uh, before we begin, we'd like to remind everyone to please silence all cell phones or electronic devices so that they do not disturb the speakers on the floor. And the restrooms are located out the front, out the front door to your right. Before we begin, we would like to uh, acknowledge our visiting brethren, Dr. Frank Lewis from our Springfield, Ohio branch. We welcome you, Frank. <laughs> and for our first speaker of the morning, we're happy to call Dr. Kathy Harris. First, I'd like to say good morning to the class. Good morning. And um, I thought I was just having a hot flash, but no. Um, <laughs> you see, all of a sudden, my, it's just got hot all of, at, at once, but you know, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to know who Yahshua is mm -hmm. and, and to realize how important it is for us to have him in us. It's okay to be in somebody else, but you want him in you. You know, and because if you if you have him in you, you can recognize him in someone else. That's right. Yeah, and um, my prayer is always that he gives me the uh, let me learn how to discern, um, <clears throat> even within myself. As apparently, you know, I, I I'm finally realizing that I'm not in control right. of right. anything, <laughs> anything at all. So I'm really grateful for that, and. Um, I've always been terrified to be called on the floor. <laughs> but um, Yahshua had to calm me down and let me know. He's, I mean, I've been in class for a lot of years, and I, I know something. Right. He's taught me right. something because he can teach us all things. Right. So I had to calm myself down. And it's not me. Is Joshua keeping me calm? Because right now I'd be crying and calling on my mom. But I know my mother and father is Yahweh Elohim. That's who I got to call on through Joshua. 
Um, let's see, where should I start? Uh, can someone get that scripture about Moses when he wants to, he says, you know, I don't have a mouth to speak with or something? Okay. Every time I hear that, I think about me. It's like, okay, so you're in control now, so you can, but no, that's not it. That's Exodus 3, and I'll start at four. No, actually, uh, four. I think it's in the fourth chapter. Okay. Yeah, so I'll start at Exodus 4 and um, 10. Thank well, you. let me start up a little bit. Okay. 4 and 6. Okay. And Yahweh said furthermore to him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again. And he plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, nor hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon thy dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto Yahweh, O oh, my Elohim, I am not eloquent, neither the here excuse me, neither hereto, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And Yahweh said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf? or the seeing, or the blind, have not I Yahweh? No. Mm -hmm. That's, that always reminds me of how terrified I've been. But <sighs> Yahshua can help us through anything. Mm -hmm. And that's where our faith comes in. And you got to trust in him. You can't trust in yourself right. or anybody else for that fact. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that I'm understanding that. And um, Thank you very much for the opportunity, and hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> oh, see, I'm trying to take it. I know you're trying to take it with me. <laughs> thank you. Okay. We enjoyed that, Kathy. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Harris. And for our next speaker, we're happy to call from our Springfield, Ohio branch, Dr. Frank Lewis. Can I just say these Lewises? I love them, I do. I know they are. <laughs> well, Lewis means soldier, and we're in the oh, Salvation oh, Army. Oh, <laughs> Salvation <laughs> Army is what we're into. And we were called by a new name now, though. <laughs> oh, boy. And he was enlisted right there at the burning bush, you understand? And he got those signs and wonders there. And he said he didn't speak well. Uh, but what he was shown, uh, he was shown a great vision uh, about the name. And if we hadn't come into school, we wouldn't know. We always want to emphasize as a school and not a church, and it did come by way of a divine vision and revelation. And when it's taught the way that the Holy Spirit gave it to him and he taught, there ain't no body, no spirit, no one can disprove it. Because it's the truth Yahweh's given the world. That's, what you're, that's the revelation that you get. Uh, this is the truth. <laughs> and if it's the truth, there ain't nothing no better. You understand? And, and you can, and, and uh, just as he repeated, uh, you read that he uh, didn't speak well and uh, he stuttered. Uh, uh, well, uh, Yahweh repeats things. You understand? And you can just catch, uh, uh, well, there's just a lot of things to talk about. <clears throat> uh, so when he has that vision, uh, he gets the name. And he tells them, you tell the children of Israel that Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And that's why it doesn't stop. And before we came to class, we didn't hear that. You wasn't hearing the name. Uh, 
And you know, even with the, in the, the word name, you can almost have an acronym there. Uh, some reason they say the name don't matter because it's not about me. <laughs> N-A-M-E. Not about me. Well, it really is. You just don't know that you don't know that you don't know. And we didn't know that we didn't know. Except, I tell you what, when I came down here, I knew I didn't know because I didn't know. <laughs> you understand? So when they told the truth, I had to just say, well, I ain't never heard nothing like that. But I learned more in that two hours than I had all my 26 years before. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and thanks be to Yahweh that you just keep coming and find out about it for real, you know. And, uh, and then after you've had that experience within yourself, you want somebody else to have that experience. You understand? To, to be a son of Yahweh. You know a lot of people are into titles. But there's only one title that means anything in this school, and that's a son of Yahweh in righteousness. <laughs> Joshua, you understand? That's what it says in 1 John 3. It says, uh, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of Yahweh. It don't appear what we're going to be, but we know that, when, that, that, that the universal revelation, we're going to receive a, a, a spirit embodiment there. You know? Uh, uh, in other words, that's really what the purpose is, is that Yahweh, uh, when Yahweh Elohim come forth, well, man, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> Even the scripture lesson. Uh, last time that was read, uh, well, it's kind of wild that, in, well, since I went to Ohio, it's the first place I've ever seen that when they call the scripture reader, they're the ones that gives the scripture lesson. And matter of fact, one of the last time Valerie was called, to read it. She read 2 Corinthians 4, and we had new people. I never even touched it. And I thought, well, that ain't right. <laughs> you know, there's at least something good in there. And matter of fact, I think as the uh, first speaker was talking about the seventh thing, I believe 2 Corinthians 4 and 1 through 7 is one of the scriptures for the seventh thing, if I believe it, right? <clears throat> uh, uh, I don't know. But read 2 Corinthians 4 and 1 there. Well, I'll say it this way. Uh, see, uh, Moses is given a vision to deliver the children of Israel. And so when he gets the vision of the name, he's given the vision, but not without witnesses. That's what they was reading about the, uh, you know, throwing a rod down. It turns into a serpent. He's ready to run. And then he told to take it up by the tail. And, uh, and these things repeat themselves because... Uh, you know, almost everybody, uh, uh, when you grow up in America, you're going to hear something about Jesus. And, uh, and Jesus is really just the eye with a tail on it. You know, when we, learned how to write, when we learned how to draw in school, you had that blue paper with three lines and a broken line in the middle. You understand? You had to just write them down over and over and over so you'd learn your letters. And then only after you learn your I, the next thing, you put the J and you put a little tail on it. Right. Well, just as he was uh, told to pick it up by the tail, uh, when we come to class, we had to find out that uh, this vision takes up that letter J by the tail and straightens it back out to the right thing. It was originally a letter Y. You understand? Or really originally a yacht, you understand? Which is a Y in our language. Uh, even how Yahweh... Well, uh, uh, see, like in the beginning, that's a small letter right there. Uh, this letter Y uh, is this, Yod. It's the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And, uh, and even when you plant a seed, it's, it's real small. You understand? Then it, then it branches off the Ys in English. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> to show you that in the beginning he did use Hebrew, but he knew there'd be some wise or English at the end. <laughs> See? <clears throat> and, uh, and even the sperm of the Zoa looks like that. <laughs> and then later on, you know, you, you know how many wise you got in your body? Right. You understand? Just like the trees. Uh, and even Moses getting the name at the burning bush. Hmm. Boy, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> You know, he's got the River Jordan there and the Red Sea there, so it's surrounded by water. 
Well, that's the way your head is. It's surrounded by water. <laughs> you have the cerebral spinal fluid. You know, and I, you know, I had to come to class to find out about cerebral spinal fluid. I didn't even know. I, matter of fact, I didn't even know I had an aorta. That's bad. You understand? But this school teaches you everything. You understand? There's a lot of things we don't know. Right. See? Uh, but now when you have a vi and even like, well, <clears throat> even when you have a vision, how your eyes see is things uh, upside down and backwards. And then the optic nerve crosses in the back of your brain, and then you see with your brain the way it's supposed to be. Why is that? Because it isn't until after the cross. See, they were seeing it upside down backwards. They didn't have no way of knowing from the fall of Adam. See, and then uh, when he, after his death, burial, resurrection, he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. Now, in this age, the Holy Spirit's been poured out, and you can now see it the correct way. And, but a man has to have a vision and revelation. That's how the thing started at the end. I mean, at the beginning of the age. At the end of the post luvian age, after his death, burial, resurrection, they saw Yahshua ascend in a vision. And he told them he, he's going to uh, come back in like manner. Well, they had a vision and a revelation on the day of Pentecost. June 6th, that's when they was born. See? And then seven years later, Gentiles was born. You understand of the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley in the same age has a vision and revelation. Uh, and he said, don't, don't believe me, but make me prove it to your satisfaction. And you just ain't never had nobody tell you like that. Right. You understand? And then finally, because everybody, you know, I mean, the devil's, well, okay. I don't think we even started with the Second Corinthians 4 yet, did we? We better read that. Well, what's happened is it's in this age, and he doesn't said a whole lot in 1 Corinthians. A lot of stuff. <laughs> now he's done wrote a next letter to him, 2 Corinthians. You understand? And the third chapter talks about the New Testament, see, and shows how it's written in your heart and mind and that you serve Yahweh, not in the oldness of the letter, the old covenant, but in the newness of, of the Spirit. Spirit right. You know, it's by the Holy Spirit now. See, and before the Gentiles weren't even... Uh, we weren't even in the... <laughs> For 1,500 years, he only dealt with Israelites. But there were Gentiles, and they could be proselytes and become Israelites. Right. You understand? If they were circumcised. See? Physically. But, uh, but, when, but you know, Yahshua the Messiah, he was circumcised on the eighth day physically. But you know what? When he died on a Friday, and he's buried on the seventh day, all that Sabbath... When he resurrected, that was a circumcision. He was no longer going to be in a fleshy body like that. <laughs> you understand? See, that's a circumcision. No more flesh to worship the Creator. That, been, that was done a long time ago. See, and, uh, uh, and now he's poured out the Holy Spirit, it says, upon all flesh. You understand? But he took seven years to bring the Gentiles in. See? Uh, and so, uh, uh, so, so now... Now, uh, uh, as it says in Hebrew, uh, Ephesians 2.18, we both have access unto the Father by Him through the Spirit. See, see the Holy Spirit's available. And where everybody was born physically, well, uh, you have to be born again. And that's what Yahshua told uh, Nicodemus. Uh, he said, you must be... Uh, except you be born of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom. That means you ain't seeing the kingdom, and, and, and you sure don't know that it's been from the beginning. <laughs> you understand? That's what uh, Matthew 20, uh, 5, 34 says. Uh, uh, Come thou blessed, inherit the kingdom, which was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. See, we really had to come to school to learn all these things. See? We didn't even know the king. So how do you know anything about the kingdom if you don't even know the king? Right. And the king, kingdom means king's dominion. See, and when those angels were, when the demons was, well, when Satan, his angels was cast out, never to return. Uh, in uh, Revelation 10 and 12, it depends which version he used, uh, uh, King James, it'll say, uh, uh, now has come salvation. 
and the kingdom of our Lord. And strength and the kingdom of our Lord and the power of his Messiah. See, uh, so see, those ones that kept their first estate, they're in the kingdom. You understand? <laughs> From the beginning there. See, and then, and then uh, Yahweh set up things and had a, nat- had a natural kingdom. See, with these, well, hmm. <laughs> see, uh, they're down in bondage. See, they can't get themselves out. So getting the true name Yahweh and then the God, true gospel being pre or Yahweh setting ten devastating plagues and the tenth plague he sets up time and they kill a lamb, see, and they have a Passover feast. And uh, so they were delivered uh, uh, by the blood of the lamb there. <laughs> and that's what it says when the, the, those, uh, Satan and his host was cast out. It says uh, they overcome him by the blood of the Messiah and the, from the power of their testimony or something like that, right? See, uh, well, do uh, you see the natural type overcoming by the blood here? See, and, and that's physical bondage, and it was by a death, burial, resurrection, in the name of Yahweh, they were delivered. See, and Pharaoh and his host cast into the Red Sea were likened unto Lucifer, Satan, the devil being cast out of the angelic realm. And see, but, but even though they're delivered out of the land of Egypt, they ain't stopped the devil from just deceiving people. He'd right. been deceiving all the way up to when Joshua died, buried, resurrected, and he's still deceiving. You understand? And that's kind of the way the scripture lesson was talking about there. See, but how they were delivered out of physical bondage was through a death, burial, resurrection, and Pharaoh's hosts were cast into the Red Sea. See, and how you're delivered from spiritual bondage, you're in bondage to the, from the for death from the fall of Adam and from sin, and it took Yahshua the Messiah uh, uh, to be that atonement and that sacrifice for sin. Uh, and he had to do this because he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You understand? <laughs> uh, and, and really, when he come forth being a lamb slain before the foundation of the world, he created an angelic host first, and then he created mankind. You understand? It has a purpose behind it. So with those angels that were cast out never to return, now man has a soul, and he can save the soul of man or woman. You understand? In other words, uh, you have different attributes that form our, a man's soul from a woman. No. Just like, uh, you know, you can read in the Bible in the church, it'll say, I don't suffer a woman to teach. I like how Dr. Kinley said, I don't want no man teaching me neither. I want the Holy Spirit speaking through him. So it don't matter what body he's speaking through, as long as it's the Holy Spirit. You understand? As long as you're being taught the truth, and the Holy Spirit's the spirit of truth. See? So it just ain't the same way the world looks at things. You understand? When you come down here. Because he said he poured his spirit upon all flesh. Well, that, that means man, woman, don't matter what color, don't matter where you come from. See? There's just one... This gospel, it really, it's good news for everyone. I don't mean everybody's going to receive it, but it's still taught to them. I mean, when they come down to this school. <laughs> and he told them in Romans 1 and 20, you're without excuse. Because he made this whole universe to be as it is. And the scripture lesson today, too, there's one thing a lot of people don't understand in this school. Just read 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, just for... A uh, little point of reference. Uh, well, we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit saying that. So we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah. And that's one thing a lot of people in the school don't understand is judgment. Right. <laughs> never run it down through the Bible. Never check it out. They, they say a lot of things, and then when you hear it repeated, you repeat it too. Mm. But you never research. You don't ever think of well, why is he judging me then? If it's the way some of these people are talking about things. And the Holy Spirit says, <laughs> we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah. Read. Every, that everyone may receive the things that done. That everyone, not just some. Everyone. Read. May receive the things done in his body uh-huh. according to he have done, whether it be good or bad. And we've all done a lot of that, good and bad. 
You understand? See, and even messed up while we was in the school for a little bit because we didn't have a right understanding. That's right. You understand? Right. See, uh, uh, and we've all had to admit we was wrong. That's right. You understand? Uh, why? Because we was all wrong. <laughs> and that's what the school is for, is to correct you. You understand? Uh, since we're there, we might as well, man, there's so much in that scripture lesson. It's amazing to me. And when you get four and five, I, I, I think well, there's a lot of things I think when I see four and five. <laughs> One thing I think about is that's, that's how long the ark was, was 45 inches. See, <clears throat> Caleb said he was 40 and 5 years waiting for that inheritance. You understand? When Yahshua Messiah poured out the Holy Spirit, it started the fourth dispensation and the fifth age. That's 45. It's a most holy place principle, kind of. You understand? See, then Dr. Kinley preached pretty much close to 45 years. Okay? So it's kind of, it's got a, there's something to it. <laughs> But read 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. Then we'll go back to 4 if y'all will allow There's a lot to talk about. You understand? Read. Five and and I'll tell you what. Uh, I just learned that if he, whatever he tells me to say, I say it. Yes. You understand? <laughs> because so I remember when I was a young and stupid minister. Well, young. And stupid, I guess, still. I had some revelation in my seat. I said, oh, I can't wait until they call me up and right. bring that out. And then they call me up. I never bring it out. Or I'm on the floor, and he says, say this. And I'm going, not yet. I ain't finished my law and profit yet. <laughs> then you forget and never say it again. Yeah. You understand? Because you got an idea how it's supposed to be. See, I kind of look at it as a, like when we were preaching in Jamaica one time. Uh, I was telling them. And I was real young in the school then, probably about two or three years, two and a half maybe. And uh, two and a half, you don't know that much, but you might know enough to help somebody else though. And I'm telling them how you're made from the dust of the ground, and uh, that's why we all got different colored dust. And we're preaching outdoors. This guy raises his hand, he goes, well, why we got uh, different types of hair? <laughs> And I said, because Yahweh purposed it. He's laughing at me because he know that wasn't no answer. Right, right. I mean, it is an answer, but it ain't a good one. It's right. more or less you don't know. You don't know. Right. Then all of a sudden he showed me. Because you got different types of grass growing out of the earth. If you made from the earth, you got different types of grass growing out of the earth. So you got different colors, dust. You got different types of grass growing out. That's why we got different types of hair. I said, now you see, I didn't know that. But he showed it to me and had me say it. I said, that's what it really is. We're really, he's like, he's kind of like a ventriloquist. We're the dummy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the one <laughs> that can speak through you. I like how Dr. Kinley talked about one time. He said, you know, people look at him when he said he had a vision revelation. And they're hearing what he has to say and they're saying, I don't believe he, they, they, creator would speak through that guy. Right. He ain't got the right paint job on. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand? He said, well, well, he spoke through a jackass back there. Why can't he speak through me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, ain't it? <laughs> and why? <clears throat> you know, I had to come into class and find out about uh, I'm reading the story of Samson. And I'm and uh, I'm thinking, uh, one time he took a jawbone of ass and slew a thousand Philistines. Mm -hmm. That was blood. Death. And then he's ready to die. And it says, Yahweh cleaved the, he said, I'm going to die thirst. And Yahweh cleaved the hole in the, uh, in the jawbone and water come out. And he drank the water and he says, my spirit is revived. You see the blood, water, spirit? And I was wondering, why a jawbone of an ass? Well, he spoke through the man back there in Numbers, or spoke to that prophet through the jackass. Right. Then you have the slaying a thousand with the jawbone of an ass. Right. And you know when Joshua walked around, they were jealous of him and say, you didn't learn that Bible from us. How you know them? How you know what's in there? Right. Didn't realize he the one that wrote it. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So they were thinking he was a dumb animal. 
because he didn't go and learn it from them. You understand? But what do you think they're going to talk about a man with a sixth grade education? And that don't mean, just because you got a sixth grade education, usually, you know, people, you can be an educated fool, in other words. <laughs> you can go to school. Well, in other words, uh, that don't mean you ain't, but I tell you what, when the Holy Spirit takes all you by divine vision and revelation, you ain't going to find nobody smarter than what uh, the Holy Spirit education that he gave him, and you can have the same one. That's right. You understand? In other words, he ain't leaving you out. That's right. So we were all, uh, and then so dumb means you can't speak. Mm. <laughs> but you got something to say. That's why when I used to have, I mean, I used to go to classes and they'd call somebody up to speak. And sometimes I was in our class. And they'd say, I ain't got nothing to say. No thing? No thing. <laughs> you should have something. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Because we've learned some things. And look, there's more that we don't know yeah, right. than we do. Right. Naturally. Yeah. Right. So where do you think we are in the spirit? There's a lot more we don't know than we do. And, and, and really, these bodies can't handle it all. And that's, again, that's really what the purpose is, is that, is that uh, well, the next age, uh, you're not going to have a physical body to hinder you, or you ain't going to have the satanic spirit to trouble you. Now, that is... A, a joyous thing <laughs> that would be, that is eternal life and the re and that's and that's one thing he said I always like to repeat what the Holy Spirit said through Dr. Kinley uh, he said uh, there's one thing you don't know nothing about and that's learn about Yahweh without a physical body and that's right. right that's what the next age is he's so magnificent and great and perfect and beautiful that uh, uh you have to take off the physical body so that he can reveal more to you and show more about himself. And that just, that just starts the fifth age. See, that's why this age has to end. See, uh, this age is the fourth age. That's like Wednesday. Don't Wednesday have to end so Thursday can come? Are you worried about Wednesday ending? No. no. So Thursday can come? <laughs> no. So <clears throat> we shouldn't worry about the end. There ain't much you can do about it. Right. You understand? Right. You didn't bring it in, you ain't taking it out. But he's the one that gives you your physical life, and he's the one giving eternal life. And, uh, and, and, and he gave this teaching to the world so that they would know something about him as he really is and actually exists. And, uh, and, uh, and as you, uh, if you, if you, if, well, uh, so he said, Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom. That's in uh, John about 3 and 3, something like that. Then 3 and 5, because he asked, well, can I go in my mother's womb? You understand? Again, hey, baby ain't going back in the mother's womb. Right. So you know grown person ain't. <laughs> so the born again means uh, born of the spirit, of course. And then he says, except you be born of the water and of the spirit. See? You can't enter into the kingdom. That's what it says. And, and one thing we had to come to school to find out, uh, he wasn't talking about water baptism, because you ain't born when you could be water baptized. That ain't no birth there. You understand? That was just a, well, baptism under repentance. We was all born physically out of the water. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 an amniotic fluid. See, uh, uh, with amniotic fluid in our mother, that uh, means little lamb. Right. So that means you were covered by the lamb even from the beginning, before you come into this world. But you have to understand about the lamb. You got to eat it. That's a Passover. You got to, you got to, there's a feast. It was a Passover feast for them to be delivered. And when you come and learn about this pattern, how there's a death, a burial, a resurrection, an ascension, and there's blood, water, spirit, 40. See, uh, you're having a, you have a feast <laughs> when you learn about the things we learned down in this school. You understand? And it's a Passover feast, too, because you didn't know. 
John 17 and 3 says, and this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim right. and Yahshua Messiah thou hast sent. Now, we didn't know, so I guess we were dead. You didn't know. And then 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7 says, you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua, rest, Sabbath, see, when Yahshua shall reveal with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh, because eternal life is to know, and obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. That ends a very important thing, because we didn't know what the gospel of Yahshua Messiah was right. until we come down here. How that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures. See, there was a lamb killed before they're brought out of bondage of Egypt, a lamb killed in every morning and every evening. That's a daily sacrifice, a death, burial, resurrection, see? And then death, burial, resurrection again, <laughs> you understand? Because it happened twice that day, see? And uh, all these things are talking about Yahshua the Messiah, see? Uh, <clears throat> all right, so 2 Corinthians uh, 5.14 there. 2 Corinthians 5.14, for the love of the Messiah is restrained the love of the Messiah constraineth us, has power over us. Read. Because we thus judge that if one died for all. If then one we, died for all. Then we're all dead. Then they all were dead. Ain't nobody. <laughs> you understand? Everybody needs help. Right. You understand? There, he didn't just do that for himself. Right. See? And then that was one of the stupid things they come out with. Joshua died for himself. Did that lamb die for itself in the tabernacle? Did it die for itself coming up out of the land of Egypt? Anyway, people make up. Anyway, that satanic spirit don't stop lying when you come into class. Uh, right. Showing how powerful he is. He done got in people preaching false doctrine and crazy stuff. Yeah, it's really bad. Read on. He died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. You don't live to yourself. See, sometimes that's all we think about is ourselves. You don't live to yourself, read. But unto him which died for them but and rose live, again. Yeah, and rose again. See, that's a, and that's one, you know, the New International Version? They took again out of the Bible. Every place that says he's going to die, bury, and raise again the third day, which is good. I mean, I even count. I ain't counted them. But it's a bunch of them. You understand? And they took it out. Why? They don't understand. How are you going to have him die, bury, when you only have Jesus coming one time? You understand? So how did he raise again? You understand? You don't have that. See? But in this school, you know, uh, we're taught how that uh, Yahshua, the son of Nun, none of the flesh, he appears down there in Egypt. Right. See, and his name Yahshua. See, so if he, he's 30 years old, well, how you know that is because he died at 110, so then he's 40 years up there fighting a battle, so you just subtract 40. And that means he went through, he, he went through the, Red sea, uh, the River Jordan when he was 70 with the children of Israel. Then they was 40 years here, so right. 70 minus 40 gives you 30. Right. See? So, and, and so you have a death, burial, resurrection. And see right here, on the same line as the Red Sea, because that's a baptism in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. He's... You know, 1 Corinthians 10 chapter, he goes, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. <laughs> now, isn't that what, that's what the, that's the Holy Spirit telling them. And that's what the Holy Spirit set this school up so we wouldn't be ignorant. You know, back in the days, if I tell him, you're ignorant, man, you'd say, okay, that's right. it's time to get ignorant. Right. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> But ignorant means lack of knowledge, and all of us lack knowledge. You understand? When you come to this school, we didn't know. So he had to have a school to teach us, to keep us from being ignorant. You understand? So he said, moreover, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant, lack of knowledge. And we all lacked it, especially of the Creator. There's probably not any other subject where people are ignorant in than, this, than, than, than about the Creator, you know, and about your salvation. 
See, and about the purpose of Yahweh. You understand? And it's an eternal purpose. So, it's amazing how, anyway. But anyway, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, I would not you be ignorant how all our fathers passed were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that rock and the King James Version say followed them. Mm-hmm. And like we come down to this school, Dr. Kinley said, did he ask his disciples, can I follow you, Peter? <laughs> no. Matter of fact, when he talked about his death, burial, resurrection in the 16th chapter, Peter said, that ain't going to happen to you. He said, get behind me, Satan. So he sure ain't following him. (laughs) You understand? (laughs) Peter had to follow him. And that's what he told him. Follow me. You understand? They dropped their nets. If you just read one of the chapters. The other one, you'll read, he almost did the same thing as he did at the end. They ain't caught nothing. He said, hey, drop your net this way. And that, that's when he said, then he said, follow me. And I, you understand? And even Peter said, in, uh, I think it's Luke about 5 and 8, he said, he said uh, uh, well, something about, uh, uh, forgive me, you know, I'm a sinner. So that means he's a confessed sinner. So, and then they're going to build a church, St. Peter's Basilica, the biggest church in the world on St. Peter. But then when you read down there, he called him Satan. So you done built that church on Satan. You don't realize, you know, it, but after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it wasn't just Peter, because he said upon uh, about 16, 13 of Matthew, he goes, uh, you are Peter, but upon this rock will I build my assembly, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So he said he's going to build it, not Peter and not on him. You know, and then after his death, burial, resurrection, he pours out the Holy Spirit. Paul talks about it in uh, Ephesians, the first chapter. Read for Ephesians 1 and about 20. 20 uh, start at 21. That's Ephesians 1 and 21. Mm-hmm. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named. Now that's how great the name Yahshua right. is. How far, uh, far above all principality and power and name. Yes. And every name that is named, don't matter what name you're talking about. Read. The name that is named, not only in this world. Not only in this world. But also in the world. And the world he's come. talking about is the age we live in. Wow. Not only in this world, but the one to come. That's, right. that's going to bring you on over, see. Read. And have put all things under his feet. He put all things under his feet. Just yeah. like he put, I always like that too, man. I tell you, the, the way, some of the ways Dr. Kinley express, expressed stuff, he said, I tell you what, when he was on the cross, he said, he done nailed the sun, the moon, the stars, all them carnal words, and the universe to the cross. In other words, now that's doing some end of the natural, ain't it? Why did he do that? That's at the end of that age. So what's Yahweh going to do? He's going to repeat it. And right at the end of this, he's going to get it all. He's going to bring it all to an end. Ain't going to be no fleshly thing left. You understand? When he hit the universal revelation. He brought it in. He's going to take it out. See? Uh, some of the things he said are just, you know, they're like, Wow. <laughs> and, I, and so I always like to repeat them because I liked them so I thought you might <laughs> or if he tells me to say it I go ahead and say it Right. <laughs> read and have put all things under his feet yeah he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the assembly now he's the head of the church he's the head of the assembly read which and is, that's why, you know, some people used to say, well, the reason you're disagreeing with the international dean is because you, uh, you don't like him. No. I don't even know him that good. It's the doctrine, man. You know, that's what we're against. We're not against people. Because we was wrong. You understand? We're against false doctrine taught to them. You understand? And then they said, 
And, and then they said, see, he's the, Dr. Kinley made him head over this thing. No, it's in the Bible who the head is. And in, the, in the Daniel 9.26, it's only in the King, uh, Holy Name version, he said the Messiah will be cut off without a successor. Why is that? Because he ain't dead. <laughs> he died, buried, resurrected. How are you taking his place? How are you taking the head's place? You can't take the head's place. So if he say he's the head of the assembly, and see, that's what the problem is with the world. I just listened to a Christian thing coming up here because my tapes are broke. My tape, my player don't work. <laughs> <laughs> and a guy had to talk about Jesus coming back. Well, if, if he's the head, which we just read, and he done gone away, then that means you ain't got no head. He's coming. Your head's coming back. No, Can you live without your head? No. So there's an easy natural to understand the spiritual. He ain't the, if he, your head's gone and you're waiting for your head to come back, you need to find the right head. Because <laughs> that's a dead head. <laughs> you understand? Dead body too. Because the body can't live without the head. So he's the head of the assembly. Read. Which is his body. Which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yeah, he filleth all in all. He done poured out his Holy Spirit, those that believe him. Now you got the, uh, we'll read Ephesians 2 and about 20, I think, 2, 2 and 20. Maybe. Ephesians 2 and 20. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, start at 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the with the sons and of the household of Elohim. See, he's talking about the Gentiles mm -hmm. now. Read. And are built upon, by the Spirit, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On this side, read. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles. Now and you're prophets. built upon the foundation of the uh, prophets and the apostles, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it said. Yep. Yeah. Read. Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, Yahshua Messiah being the chief cornerstone. Now, see, this is Paul talking about the, 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 the true house, true temple. Read. And whom all the building fitly framed together, uh -huh. growth into an holy temple in Yahweh. See, the holy temple is a, a spiritual building, spiritual uh, body or assembly. Just like in, uh, and Peter talks about it in 1 Peter uh, 2 and 5. Read that. First Peter. See, yeah, they did, they did have an a ark made, threefold, upper story, middle story, lower story, upper deck, middle deck, lower deck, Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. He's three or one. You got, only way to be saved from the, in the antediluvian age was get in the ark if you lived in that time. That's the only way to be saved. One way. That's how simple it is. There was only one way through the Red Sea. You understand? With this tabernacle, there was only one door you to enter into the holy place see and so we had a tabernacle uh, that's next thing built most holy place holy place court roundabout divine specifications see then that tabernacle was 40 years here 450 years here and then 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 this was dissolved and the tabernacle the, the vessels went into the temple see and this is threefold oracle sanctuary and porch this this had this is representing Yahshua's spiritual body. How do you know that? Because when Yahshua Messiah said, destroy this temple, and in three days will I raise it up, or destroy this temple. He was staying in the temple. Three days, destroy this temple. This. <laughs> we didn't know the difference between this and that. <laughs> and in three days will I raise it up. Well, from the fall of Adam, that was the first temple. You know, he, in other words, don't you know... 1 Corinthians 3.16, you can't think that everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, but I always do tell you what the scripture is <laughs> so that you can go and check it out. You understand? Because it's good to know that it's in the Bible. Ain't just somebody running their mouth. Right. Read. You want 1 Corinthians? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Now this is the Holy Spirit saying that, at, at, you know, in the age we live in. It's important to know what age and dispensation you live in. Read. Know you not that ye are the temple of Yahweh? Don't you know you're the temple of Yahweh? Read. And, sorry, and that the spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you. And the spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you. Well, 
Well, so if, if that's the way it is, your temple and the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you, well, what was it back here? <laughs> Who was in him? You understand? It was a temple. So this temple, he came down, and exactly 3,000 years later, which would be three days of Yahweh, that's when this temple is dedicated. Exactly. What's it showing? That Yahshua Messiah is going to die, bury, resurrect on the third day. You understand? These three just over-repeat themselves. And the tabernacle is like a physical body, you know, because it had skin and hair being parts of it. See, the coverings was uh, two types of skin and goat's hair. Well, that's what you got. That's what Yahshua Messiah is walking around in is a fleshly body. But the nine substances that made up the temple didn't have skin and hair in the temple. See, to show you that the resurrected body of Yahshua isn't flesh and blood. In the, you understand? Uh, it's stone and iron that uh, make the difference between what's... So this is a more permanent structure, but it's torn down because it's testified, you know, he's the real body he's going to come in, and he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit and bring a spiritual body, a spirit body, in other words. And you know, when he's Yahshua, the son of Nun back here, he's the one giving Moses the vision of himself when he transfigures, showing how he created the creation, how the creation come in. You say, Yahshua, Messiah created the creation? Yeah, that's in the Bible. It's in the Bible in Ephesians 3 and uh, 9. It says the mystery. Uh, the, well, you better read it because I messed that up. <laughs> 3 and 9. That's Ephesians 3 and 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. He wants to make all men see, not just some. Read. Did he just die for some or he died for all? We just read that in the scripture lesson. Joshua died for all, then all had to be dead. See, people want to act like it was right. The guys was righteous back here. They ended up not being that way. That's why how Joshua had to die for all. Because all were dead. Right. Read. Mm -hmm. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, uh -huh. which from the beginning of the world has been hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Who created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Now, before we come into class, did we say Jesus created all things? No. They wasn't teaching that. They think thinking Jesus and God are different. Yeah. Right. But it said Yahshua created all things. That's what makes him the Savior, and that's why none of us is... <laughs> And like he said, I ain't your savior. You understand? Because he didn't create things. The only way you can be the savior is be the one that created and you're responsible for it. And you get those from those lectures that he, that he talked about. That's, we're so nice to have those lectures. <laughs> Read the 11th verse. Mm -hmm. 11th verse. According to the eternal purpose. He's got an eternal purpose. Mm -hmm. Which he purposed in the Messiah. He Yahshua. purposed it in Yahshua Messiah. Did we know there was an eternal purpose of Jesus Christ? But those things are in the Bible, but it has to be pointed out to you by the Holy Spirit, see. Read. Mm -hmm. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in the Messiah, Yahshua, our Savior. Which he purposed in the Yahshua Messiah, our Savior. That's right. See, so now, well, when he's back there as Yahshua, the son of Nun, and he brings them out of the land of Egypt, and he brings them up here, speaks the law down to them. You understand? June 6, too. See? <laughs> then, seven days later, month of June, that's when they see that spirit embodiment. See? And then uh, that's him transfiguring. See? Then he shows Moses the creation coming in by the pattern for seven days and for 33, the tabernacle pattern. See? And then Moses comes down with that first table of stone. They built a golden calf. He cast the table of stone down. See? Now he's down here for 40 days telling him what he had up in his vision, what he saw. See? And Yahshua's down there listening to it. You understand? <laughs> and that's why he's got to catch him up in the 34th chapter. See, when he came down there to tell him, they said, well, Moses, you was up there. We thought you was dead. Right. You understand? And he said, what happened? He said, uh, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and earth. There was our form of void. And he's telling them he only uses Elohim in that first chapter. He also says he created the heaven and the earth. So all you're going to see is Elohim, 
uh, uh, see, he didn't have a full understanding, in other words. He saw uh, Adam and Eve in a peaceful state in the garden. Right. You understand? So he don't understand why they were transgressing down here. See, he had to catch them up again. And in that 34th chapter, hmm. and you know, in this school, we never heard nobody tell us until we come to school that it says in 24 and 16, or read 24 and 15 of Exodus. See, you know he spoke from a cloud back here. See, and, they, <laughs> and it said the cloud was a fiery inferno and smoke and all that. See, and did you ever hear anybody try to tell you that the creator symbolized himself as a cloud? <laughs> Until you come down to the school. But it's in your Bible, ain't it? Now read the 24 and 15 there. That's Exodus 24 and 15. Uh -huh. And Moses went up into the mount, mm -hmm. and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai. See, the cloud covered the mount. Moses going up into the cloud. See, the cloud, read on. And the cloud covered it six days. And the cloud covered it six days. Now, you see how both of them started with and? <laughs> you understand? And then after he says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. The earth without form of void. And the uh, uh, spirit of Elohim moved across the face of the waters and said, let there be light, and so on and so on. You understand? And then you got and all the way through there. See? But we never heard, and the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And then we saw, we were taught, there's a coal in there. Right. So it's the, what happened in six days? And then it says the seventh day, he calls Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And then you read that on the seventh day, he rested. Well, Moses had to rest. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and and uh, that's, it. that's where Genesis 1 goes. Okay, now when you go to Exodus 30, after he's down here for 40 days, Telling them the tabernacle. See how you know the, what happened the rest 33 days? Because Exodus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31, those are seven chapters talking about the tabernacle. You understand? And you can correlate each chapter with each day of creation. 25 goes with the first day, 26 goes with the second day, 27 goes with. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff, okay? Then 31 talks about. I gave them my Sabbaths. Why does it say Sabbath? That's the seventh chapter. <laughs> in 32 is when he comes down and casts the table of stone down. They built the golden calf. So now in 34, he tells them, you out two to table of stone like the ones he broke. And it said, Yahweh proclaimed the name of Yahweh. Now why does he do that? Because he didn't use Yahweh in Genesis 1. <laughs> he used Elohim. So then Yahshua has to teach him, no, it's Yahweh Elohim. You understand? He had to proclaim it again. In other words, you know, you can leave some things out when you have a vision. But right. the revelation or Holy Spirit is going to teach you and give you the revelation of the right. thing. So that's why Genesis 2 and 4 to King James and 2 and 1 of the Holy Name will say, well, <laughs> Holy Name will say these are the origins of the heaven and earth. But King James says these are the generations of the heavens, heavens and the earth. See, King James just said heaven and earth. Now in 2 and 4, it says heavens and the earth. In the day, Yahweh held and created the heaven and earth. We ain't never heard about no day <laughs> that was representing the day of eternity. You had to come to school to learn that. Right, right. That's a man teacher by vision and revelation. Because if you read the Bible, you'll think it was six days that happened. Right. But that's according to Moses' vision on top of Mount Sinai. In reality, it was done in the and the day Yahweh Elohim created the heavens and the earth. See? Okay, where do you see that? Exodus 34, 27. And we know you probably all know all these things, but we repeat things down here. Do you understand? Read. Exodus 24, 34, 27. And Yahweh said to Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant. And write thou these words. You know there's a coal in there? Why is that? Because that's where he got to see the Exodus, the Genesis 2, the Genesis 3, <laughs> the Genesis 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up through Genesis 50. 
You understand? Moses the one writing that. How do you know that? Because he's using the name Yahweh. Who knew the name Yahweh? You even got the, he's, he's told Abram. Uh, it said Abram called on the name of Yahweh twice. Well, it's a bunch of more times than twice. <laughs> but uh, Genesis 12 and 8 and 13 and 4, it says Abram called the name of Yahweh. But Yahweh, but Yahweh told Moses down here, he didn't know me by my name. You understand? He, they, all they knew was El Shaddai. We learned all that stuff in this school. So what happened is Moses is catching him up. I mean, Yahweh is, El, Yahshua is showing him. In other words, when it says the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things back to your members. Then How could Moses write? Moses wrote some serious detail in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. How did he do that? Holy Spirit taught him. <laughs> you understand? He taught him all them things. <laughs> and had to bring him back to his remembrance. Because don't you think you'd have forgot something? Yes. But we're so smart down here, though. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? We don't have to go back to Moses. You understand? Matter of fact, that was one of the things he used to say. They'd say, I'm tired of going back to Moses. You understand? I tell you what, there ain't nothing you can't say. You really can't speak about nothing Moses didn't see. You know why? Because he saw the creation. That's, all, that's the natural. He saw a pattern. Is there anything not going by the pattern? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he saw a lot of stuff, didn't he? And Joshua began at Moses. Why? Because he began back with him when he was showing him them things. And Moses, when he comes down, he comes down with a second table stone all lit up. And that second table stone goes in the Ark of the Covenant, which now we know. Before we come to class, was we seeing, oh, yeah, that was, when they broke that first table stone, showing how they broke that, they're going to break that old covenant. <laughs> and they're going to need a new one. And since it was put in the Ark of the Covenant, that means he's going to place it in man's heart and mind on the day of Pentecost. We ain't never heard nothing like that. Right. You understand? See? We, <laughs> So that's right there, that colon. Write thou these words, and there's a colon there. That's where he saw the Genesis 2 and all that. You understand? Right. See? And so he come down with a whole lot of stuff. Matter of fact, he's so caught up, he sees Joshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, outpouring his beard. He had to put a veil over it, so he can't tell them the things he saw. Right. Or they'd say, hey, he needs to go to the crazy house. That's yeah. the stuff he's talking yeah. about. Because even when he told them about the tabernacle, that's when Korah, Byram, and Dathan, and Korah, and Byram, they're out there saying, look, Moses, we're experienced builders. That ain't going to stand, what you're talking about. What they didn't realize, hey, I got it by vision revelation. He told me to make it according to all that I showed you. Don't make no mistakes. Like, like Dr. Gilly said, you make a mistake, you done messed up heaven and earth. Because <laughs> it's, all, <laughs> you know, he made everything. By the, he is the Elohim, the archetype, original pattern universe. That's the name of that chart. That's the name of the Elohim book. That's the name of the first chapter of the Elohim book. And then people act like, I've heard some fools say, you don't need that pattern. See, they had the pattern back there. They messed up, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't have no Holy Spirit yet. <laughs> they didn't have no vision or revelation at the end of the age. Where you can, like Dr. Kinley said, be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. See? So when Yahshua Messiah fulfills, well, <clears throat> then he's the one. Moses dies, and he's at Mount and Aaron. They both had uh, at Mount Nebo. Every knee got a bow. You understand? And Yahshua is the only one that can take you over. See, fight your battles, cast those nations out, and then give you your inheritance. You understand? He gave them their inheritance, but, ooh, they built two golden castles. Right. <laughs> and them kings was a mess. But that's Israel. That's his people. Now, it was a unified kingdom under, uh, well, <laughs> Saul, David, and Solomon. You understand? 120 years. See, but then after Solomon, after, see, Israel was at its highest during his time. 
I mean, that building was the greatest building ever built on the earth. See, and them Gentiles are so jealous of it, they just tore that thing down. You understand? <laughs> Why? Because they're going to they're gonna crucify him at 33. See, everything's talking about him. You understand? See, so then when he comes in, he comes in, at, he's water baptized at 30. What am I fulfilling? I was back with the children of Israel, 30 years old, in the beginning of the baptism. Now, and, Mar and John said why he was baptizing. John 1, He said, I didn't know him, but the one that sent me to baptize, the same one says, the one you see the Spirit descend like as a dove, that's the one that's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. That's what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. And then, one of those, in John 1, 29, says, the next day, John, see it, Yahshua. What next day? Did he follow him after water baptism into the wilderness? Mm-mm. It was the next day after the 40 days he tarried. <laughs> that's, that's what he saw. It. Got that from the old, older guys that was around Dr. Kidley. But anyway, one of the things we find out is, in, in, in uh, Matthew 3 and 13, it said, then come Yahshua. Now, they done been confessing their sins. And then 3.15, 3.13, it says, then come Yahshua. Under John to be back from, from, from Galilee, under Jordan to be baptized of him. And Dr. Kennedy said, Why is he coming from Galilee? And he said, It's a three day journey. He just had to pass over with his parents, just like they had to pass over right. before they went through the Red Sea. So that means it had to be in April, <laughs> you understand, when he was water baptized there. Do people only baptize people when they're in, in April? And do they wait till they're 30 years old? No. But they've fallen in his footsteps, I thought. <laughs> you understand? That, so, that ba so the Passover is April. So is the baptism. Then after you... Now, I was baptized as a baby. If you're ba so if I was supposed to be baptized as a baby, then she should have took, they should have took me into the wilderness and I fasted <laughs> for 40 days. <laughs> You think you'd make it 40 no. days being a baby out there in the wilderness? Huh? And how many people can fast 40 days after baptism? Huh? You probably say, okay, no, no, that ain't the church for me. Go to somewhere else where they ain't making me <laughs> fast for 40 days. You understand? Then on top of that, he goes up to a high mountain and starts preaching in Matthew 5. In Matthew 5, 6, and 7, that's the Sermon on the Mount. So you were supposed to, now is my baby supposed to go up to a high mountain and start preaching? June 6th, you understand? And that thing he said in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he said a lot of stuff there. You know what I'm saying? You follow in his footsteps, why can't you say everything's in Matthew 5, 6, and 7? Because you ain't following his footsteps. And you don't have to because he was fulfilling he was fulfilling the show that he's the same one that spoke the law down June 6th, so he's down there speaking in Matthew 5 there. See, in the same June 6th, too. And June 6th is the fourth feast day. See, the gospel, Matthew, or uh, uh, April 14th is the first feast day. That's the Passover. April 15th is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and April 16th is, is the Feast of First Fruits. Well, he's the Passover. He dies on April. And that's what it says in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Yahshua, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Then uh, he's in the tomb, and ain't he the true bread? He said he's the true bread. So if he died and is buried in the tomb, that body's in the tomb, and he's fulfilling the Sabbath. See, it's a Sabbath. No man or work shall be done. Well, he didn't do no work. <laughs> when you're dead, <laughs> your heart ain't beating. <laughs> your eyes ain't blinking. That no manner of work was done on the Sabbath. See, when he walked around fulfilling the old covenant, he did a bunch of healings on the Sabbath day. They didn't like it either. See, matter of fact, there was one woman in Matthew or Luke 13. He heals her, and they said, Well, you can work six days, but on the seventh day, there can't be no healing. Now, that woman had 18 years bound over. Right. Yeah. And he said, uh, well, aren't this daughter of Abraham, uh, Abraham he's been, shouldn't she be loosed 
after 18 years of being bound over to that satanic spirit? And Dolly Cullen, why is that? Because they were in bondage to Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. But you ever put that together? Man. <laughs> and you know she was happy. She don't care what day. Right. <laughs> she got healed on. You understand? But she was healed on the Sabbath. And there was a few times where that, or a bunch of times it happened. What's he fulfilling? High priest. He worked all seven days. You understand? So he's fulfilling that. See, when they say keep the Sabbath, they usually go in their car and drive down to the Seventh-day Adventist Church or the Seventh-day Baptist or whatever, saying they're keeping the Sabbath. Well, you just done work. You ain't keeping the Sabbath. See? Does the sun shine six days and stop on the Sabbath? Does your heart beat six days and stop on the Sabbath? Was any babies born on the Sabbath? Yeah. Well, who, who's, who's, who's over there giving them life? Huh? Who's doing work there? It's a type. It's a type and shadow of the true Sabbath, which is the rest that's coming up. See, if there ain't no devil to mess with you, that's rest. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> that's going to be rest. Eternal life is eternal joy, peace, uh, love, righteousness, uh, happiness throughout eternity. You understand? And, and, and you, you, can't, you can't do that with no devil bothering you. See? Uh, and that's good news. And no pain. You know, it says in the Bible, no pain, no crying, no sorrowness. See, those are things we uh, have happened in our physical existence <clears throat> with this physical body. You understand? See? And he said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. See, you get old enough, you don't want the same body throughout eternity. No. You understand? <laughs> you don't want the same aches and pains. See, there's existence after this. That's the good news. See, when he had the Holy Spirit, see, he died, buried, resurrected. He got a spirit body. You understand? That's the good news. And if you receive the Holy Spirit and you take off the flesh, you got an immortal body coming. But it takes a little time for that. How do you know? Because Adam died in his conscience first. Then it was reflected with his body. See, so he died spiritually. Then it was reflected with his physical body 930 years later. See? And then... Huh. Like I say, he always tell you something. <laughs> you see here, right here? Well, <clears throat> boy. You know, we just got through the last two national holidays have been Juneteenth mm -hmm. and uh, July 4th. Mm -hmm. Now, see, Juneteenth is, 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 is slaves finding out in Galveston, Texas, two years after they're supposed to be free. Right. Well, it's a reflect of what happened June 6, 1931. It was found out that Yahshua and Messiah had already fleed your bondage to sin and so on. And it took you almost 2,000 years <laughs> to learn about that. That's Juneteenth. <laughs> and it happened on the day of Pentecost, too. That was Juneteenth. You know what I'm saying? He pours out the Holy Spirit. And they become new creatures, as it says in the Messiah. 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in the Messiah, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. But you know, we like to bring up our old things. And, and try to bring our baggage on in and keep the baggage with us. We can't get rid of our baggage. You understand? I can't change. Well, maybe you can't, but the Holy Spirit can. Right. He can change you. You know, we're out there acting like... Oh, I can't change. You understand? The whole, and the Holy Spirit's keeping all the planets in order. they <laughs> got everything going on, but he can't keep your little button line. That don't make no sense. You understand? Terrible. See, he, that's the sun there. Ain't no life without him. See, and that sun happened on, and see, when he was Yahshua, the son of Nun, he starts the old covenant with the children of Israel in the fourth dispensation. See? Then you got the prop. That, and you see the moon over Elohim's head? See, Yahweh had already spoken down the law. 
So when they see Yahweh Elohim, got a moon over his head. Because from the fall of Adam, see, he's the first son of Yahweh, and when the sun goes down, don't it turn dark? Well, it was dark for four th- for It was dark all the way up to the time that law was spoken down. This is the fourth dispensation, and they're still in darkness. You know, because Yahshua Messiah hadn't shined his light yet. He ain't resurrected. The sun hadn't resurrected. See, when the sun resurrects, there ain't no... Ain't no darkness. He, he, the light gets rid of the darkness, don't it? Well, that's really what has to happen up here. He has to resurrect in you. I DMR, I die Messiah resurrect. <laughs> you got to die, though. But we, but we don't want to die. You understand? But, but he's got to kill you off. You understand? Right. See? Uh, uh, and, and also, I, I DMR can be... I. I do my research. That's why I ain't just going to believe everything you tell me. Right. You understand? And when it don't sound right, right, I did my research, and that don't sound right. Another idea, Mark. Right. <laughs> but, you know, he set up institute. It's the highest learning. We ain't never heard nothing like it. Man putting the Bible in pictorial form so that anybody can see and understand. See, you don't have no excuse. You know this man had a vision revelation. To show everything from Genesis to Revelation and when he saw it and all them kind of things. Bible begins with a man having a vision and ends with a man having a revelation. So what do you think it's going to take to understand it? We wasn't listening. We didn't hear nobody in no pulpit tell us he had a vision revelation. Make me prove it. Because he ain't had no vision revelation. If you don't have natural vision, you don't see natural things. See, and that's why in Matthew 15, 14, it says, if the blind lead the blind, they'll all fall in the ditch. But what was that? Well, it was up to date with us, even though he said it a long time ago. We were blind, didn't have no vision and revelation. One in the pulpit was blind, didn't have no revelation. So that's the blind falling the blind. So then when a man does have a vision and revelation, he definitely saw it. See, for him to explain it and prove it. And, you know, as a matter of fact, back here with Moses, that was the first television. That was a rerun. And he told the vision and revelation, television. He's telling the vision. See, and, you know, that's one of the things they tell the children. Uh, that's one of the first ways of them learning is show and tell. Yeah. Right. And that's how he showed it to Mo- Noah. <laughs> he showed him and told him. If he just tells him. Well, I don't, I don't know how to make a 300 cubit long uh, arc. They had to make it a gopher wood. You got to go for a lot of wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't no physical gopher tree. <laughs> Just like down here in Egypt, where Israel lived, there's a place called Goshen. They said it's the best land. Why is that? Goshen, shin in Hebrew means flesh. And so when it goes, that's the best land when the flesh goes. You understand? That's what this teaching is supposed to do. Is to get, you know, burn up that carnal mind. Romans 8 and 6 says, be carnally minded, it's death. We all walked in here that way. Ain't nobody can say, not me. Well, keep coming. <laughs> be carnally minded, death, but to be spiritually minds, life and peace. And that's what this teaching does. It transforms your mind from not knowing something to knowing something for real. Mm-hmm. See, for the truth about it, see. See, <clears throat> so, uh, so, uh, so he sees the sun, moon, and stars in this fourth uh, day of creation. So in this fourth dispensation, uh, the law spoken down. Now see this chart here. See, that artist didn't know you got to put the moon over his head because it was under the law. The moon represents the law. Mm-hmm. See, it says that in Jeremiah, well, Jeremiah 31, 31. Uh, uh, here's Jeremiah. Well, it ain't Jeremiah. You can just read it and find out. Because Jeremiah 31, 31 says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh. Right. So Yahweh's the one speaking. It ain't Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Right. That I'll make a new covenant. He's 600 years before Yahshua was born. A new covenant with the house of Israel, house of Judah. Not, new one's not going to be according to the covenant I brought, I, 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 I gave to the children of Israel uh, when I brought them out of the land of Egypt 
which my covenant break all as a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant I'll make with them after those days. After the day Joshua Messiah comes in and fulfill. And did we hear anything about fulfill before you come to school? And he said, fulfill all things. So what are you bringing across there if he said he's fulfilling all things? When you bring anything across, that's the devil making you call him a liar saying he didn't fulfill it. That's what's serious about it. When you have salvation, your Savior telling you he came to fulfill to the, to the Israelites and he's going to fulfill all things, then he must, he fulfilled all things. See, I always like how he showed, you know, how they say after he died and, and he buried them, he resurrected and them soldiers were knocked out there. They come back to the religious leaders and said, he resurrected, just like he said. They paid them money saying, you tell them the disciples stole their body, his body away. And Dr. Kinley said, mm -mm. how do you know that? How do you know they didn't steal the body away? You see anybody steal this out? <laughs> That's a natural son representing the spiritual right. son. And he's fulfilling. Well, don't the earth revolve around the sun? Yeah. And when he's on the cross, he's the sun. And it was a great earthquake. That's the earth moving around the sun. He's fulfilling everything. Wow. See? And plus, that's too hot to handle and too far away. Too big for you to grab. <laughs> so you know it can't, if you can't do it to that natural sun, you didn't do it to the sun that was in that physical body. You understand? See, and see this son, and that's why, that's why you're without, an ex well, one of the reasons, especially when you come to school, because uh, no life can be without this physical son. How do I know Yash Messiah died, buried, and resurrected? Because the sun rose today, <laughs> and it happens every day. You understand? See, that's, see you have faith. See? Yeah, I can prophesy. Sun's going down tonight. <laughs> you want to bet against me? <laughs> Why? Because the sun goes down every day. And you have faith since you've seen it happen every day that it's going to rise in the morning. Because it's testifying to the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. See, when the sun goes down every day, it turns dark. When Yahshua Messiah was on the cross, it turned dark. And it turned dark from noon to three. If you ever see the sun go down from noon to three, you'd say, that's the end of the world. Yeah. It was. It was the end of the post-diluvian post post age when the sun went down. And when the sun goes down, turns dark, and sometimes the sky turns red. Because that's when the true sun went down for the sin of the world. He was, a, he was, he was, he was shed his blood. Right. See, bloody mess going down for the sin of the world. Then when it's buried below the horizon every day, that's fine, he was buried. And when the sun resurrects early in the morning, it's showing that Yahshua Messiah resurrected early in the morning. And then he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. See, and when we come into this school, that's what happened. We didn't know these things. So we were dead. Spiritually dead. And like it says in uh, Ephesians 2 and 1, And to you hath he quickened, who were once dead in trespasses and sins, and walked according to the course of this world. We know <laughs> We know how the world thinks because, well, that's why I told those guys, well, <clears throat> we had a Ohio State board meeting, and I was telling them, <laughs> you guys try to say we was born a negative threefold entity. Well, the last time I was in Columbus, they were sending money out to the international dean because his birthday was coming up. <laughs> now, why would you celebrate the day the negative threefold entity got in you? That don't make no sense. And then on top of that, see, if there hadn't been a change in your mind since you've been this, well, I'll say this. I can still remember the fool I was before I come to class. I can still remember them days where I drink and blackout drunk. I can still roll one, but it's been a long time. I can probably still cut the white stuff and do it. And remember doing it. That's why I went to Florida, because it was cheap. Why can I remember that? Because it's the same soul that went through that. That's right. But now I don't have no power over me. Right. I was dead. Yes. I was buried. Yes, right. And he can resurrect me. Yes. So that, that, and if you think about what your knowledge was before you come into class and where it is today, that's a whole lifetime away. 
if you ever think about that one. Now these guys are out there acting like, oh no, I, that's cast down and out and I get a whole new soul. Well, you wouldn't even know how to get to uh, uh, 2,000 uh, or whatever this address, 22,200 uh, uh, Beach Road. You wouldn't know how to get there because you're too spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to know nothing physical. <laughs> You wouldn't even know how to drive your car because you're too spiritual. You understand? <laughs> you wouldn't even know your name. <laughs> you understand? You wouldn't know your family because you're right. spiritual. Right. Your physical family. Right. Who are you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I still can remember the fool I was <laughs> to show that it's the same soul, but you're a different creature now. Yeah, right. a change takes place here. It's a resurrection. He says, and you have it quicker. Now you say, it ain't no you. I mean, people got all, but 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, know you not that Yahshua Messiah is in you except you be reprobate. There's a lot of yous there. And then you want me to send money out there. But there ain't no you. <laughs> okay. So, but it says, but it says in Colossians 1.26, even the mystery, which has been hid from ages, these ages before he poured out the Holy Spirit, it was hid. Ages and generations, but now, the age we live in, now has been made, made manifest on them the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Yahshua in you, your only over glory. Well, how can he be in me? There ain't no me. You understand? There is salvation. And, it's a, and Joshua said in Luke 21, 19, in your patience possess ye your soul. Right. I guess you got one. Yeah. You understand? And then, and then in 10, 28, Joshua said, uh, well, what did he say in 10, 28? <laughs> of Matthew. <laughs> uh, uh, you better read it because I can't remember. Ten and twenty-eight. Yeah. And fear not them which kill the body. Don't fear them that kills this body. But are not able to kill the soul. But they can't kill your soul. But rather, you understand? There's more to the life than this physical. See, uh, the one. See that one in you. Uh, see this tabernacle. Usually it shows how that uh, uh, well, the court round, we, we got the top off of it. But what you got here is the court roundabout was like a fence going around a two-room house. That's what the most holy place and holy place was, was a two-room house, and you had a yard going around it. That's the uh, court roundabout. Well, it's representing that you have an inner man, which is your soul. And the spirit and soul is surrounded by this body. And see, and that's why them people couldn't figure out, well, wait a minute, everything's threefold. So when Yahshua takes off the flesh, he's only twofold now. And that's one thing that I told, you know, so they got to figure out something. You understand? And that's why they're doing the, the threefold, whatever, whatever. But anyway, I tell them, well, there's one thing you can't answer. When you talk about a switch out, uh, that this... Well, that I had a threefold inward man, devil, demon, that's what give me life, and then cast down out, and I get a new threefold Yahshua. That's your soul. That's what they say. I'll say, I'll tell you, there's one thing you can't answer. I ain't had nobody pick me up yet on it. And I've done said it a few times. Then you tell me that all them that died from Adam, all the way down through the prophets, uh, how they get a switch out? They ain't got no body to switch out. And they ain't got no answer. See? See, when you get caught like that, you ought to be thinking about something different. See? Now what? Oh, boy. Read. So, Yahshua Messiah. See, this, this fourth day of creation. 
You see when he stand, when uh, Revelation, he stands in the midst of a seven-branch lampstand? Well, see that main branch. <laughs> see, he's all talking about Yahshua. He's the Passover. He's the lamb. He's the entrance way, the purpose of Yahweh. <laughs> he's the gateway. <laughs> he's the rod. He's the light. He's the angel and the cloud lead you out. He's the, uh, enter ye into straight gate, for wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Many there go, but narrow is the way that leads unto life. He's the sacrifice. He's the living waters. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the light of the world. He's the bread. He's the intercession. It was by his flesh. See, when he died on the cross, the, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. See, in between the dispensation of, uh, of the law and from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that was a, because the antediluvian age is like the court roundabout. The post diluvian is like the holy place. So when Yahshua Messiah dies on the cross, he's entering in through the veil. You understand? Matter of fact, that's what you see here with this second veil. You see the, the, the veil is, t is, is ripped there. See, Yahshua uh, is bringing the end to all fleshly worship. And now we're going to usher in the spirit. And didn't they pour out? The, so this age we live in is the Holy Spirit or uh, uh, matter of fact, when the high priest would go in there on the Day of Atonement, go to the third trip, he'd have that vision of the Shekinah or the Shekinah. You understand? See, that's what the illumination that's going to happen in your mind when you see the atonement of Yahshua, what he's done for you, and see and how he can, he can illuminate your heart and mind. That's the sun shining his light in here. As a matter of fact, that's in the scripture lesson, if we ever got to it. <laughs> it said, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, uh, we don't faint. Mm -hmm. But we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Right, we ain't right. being dishonest with this thing. We're going to just tell you straight up right. what it is. Right. See, uh, but commending every man's conscience uh, about, about manifestation of the truth. And it says, if our gospel, so the truth matters. If, the, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world. Now, you know what the holy name does? The spirit of this age had blinded their mind. Well, this age is the present kingdom age. Holy Spirit's poured out. Spirit of the age, spirit of the, the Holy Spirit ain't blinding your mind. <laughs> the God of this world blinds your mind. He don't want you to see this thing. So he's going to put all kind of obstacles in your way. You understand? Uh, it blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel should shine unto them. See, for Yahweh who commanded Elohim commanded, for Yahweh command the light to shine out of darkness, have, 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 have shined the light of the knowledge in your mind. You understand? Uh, I didn't get it all the way right. And he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. See, that the excellency is not of us. It isn't about you know, I mean, you can give a testimony, cool. But we want to hear about Yahshua Messiah, but it helps everybody out. That's right. And the testimony can do that, too. Because right. you're testifying to what Yahshua's done for you. You understand? And it'll help the next guy, or the next person. You understand? Yeah. See, like Dr. Kinley said, it's teaching just as much for me as it is for you. <laughs> See? And then uh, I think 4 and 18 talks about... Uh, that this light affliction, it seems kind of rough. Okay, go ahead. The Second Corinthians 4 and 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. And then it said, then, what is 16? Did it, is that the one that says that our outward man perished, but our inward man's renewed day by day? You know anything about the outward man perishing? <laughs> or, or, or getting run down a little bit? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the inward man's renewed day by day because we come to class and you understand? And, and, and well, there's some daily food to eat, daily illumination uh, in this gospel. There's an intercession. See, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 5. There's one mediator between Yahweh and man, the man, Yahshua Messiah. One mediator between Yahweh and man, the man, Yahshua the Messiah. You, that, everything come out from him, so it's got to go back that way. You got to go back through him. He said in John 14 and 9, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. That's how simple it is. Ain't no other way. Ain't no other truth. And there ain't no other life. 
I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Why is that? The only one that comes from him in righteousness. That's the only way to go back. That's the way Dr. Kinley taught predestination. Now, it ain't my fault that's the way he taught it. And that's the way I'm going to believe it, too. Okay? In John 3, 16, he said it, too, twice. Yahweh so loved the world, he gave the only begotten Son, whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said that twice. I don't see people talking about that when they talk about it. But I, I am going to talk the way he said it. You understand? Because that's what I believe. I know the man had a vision of revelation. I, and I'll never go. I remember reading my uh, reading transcript, and I'm over there. Hmm, he don't mean that. Right. I'm over there trying to correct him. Right. Just a little fool. Right. You understand? Find out. You just don't know yet, bro. Right. <laughs> Keep coming. Did right. <laughs> you find out? He knew what he was talking about. You understand? Okay. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. So get the revelation. Well, so right here with this. Yeah. So he's the, he's the light, the bread, the intercession. And, and, and it's through, through that veil. And it says that in Hebrews that he entered into, you know, a by a new and living way. You understand? Through the veil there. See? And then he's the Shekinah. He's the new covenant. The Holy Spirit. You understand? He's the... He's the, he is the angel of Yahweh, and those angels are part of his spirit body. See, he'd say, this ain't no, this ain't no hollow body. How you know? Ain't, wasn't there angels around in the tabernacle? Isn't that the pattern? That's the real pattern. And, 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 and they were pressed in the walls of the temple. Right. Ain't this the temple of Yahweh? <laughs> you understand? See, and that's how we know uh, there's a, in the temple or in the body of Yahshua, it includes the angels, includes the Israelites, women, men, Gentiles, the priests. That's a big spiritual body there. So those angels that kept their first estate, they're in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Then when he died, buried, resurrected, he, he resurrected 4,033 years of souls. Now that's the resurrection and the life, ain't it? You understand? See, he, 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 Lazarus is dead for four days. He said, Lazarus, come forth. That's right. And he comes forth. And, and, and then in John 14, and, uh, 12 and 13, he says, and if you believe on me, the works I do, and greater works will you do. Because right. I go on my father. You say, what's a greater work in doing the thing Joshua the Messiah did when he walked around? It's preaching the true gospel of Joshua the Messiah. And you die, Barry, and you resurrect in your heart and mind. You're going to sin with an immortal glorified body. That's a greater work because your soul's saved throughout eternity. And it ain't you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit that's teaching this. God, he's the one who knows what he's done. And he's just telling us when we come down to school. That's why there ain't no better place to come than to come down to school. Right. You understand? He, Dr. Kinley said that. You know one of the reasons he said it? He said, name something more important than eternal life. Mm. Mm, ain't nothing. <laughs> so I better go down there. And he'd say, if you got the Holy Spirit, you need to come to class to help somebody else out. Yeah. And if you don't got it, this is a place where you can receive it because that's where we received it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so then... He died, buried, resurrected. So, he res so the angels is a part of the spiritual body. Those that resurrected. So what happened is, why he resurrected that man after being dead four days is how he proved he's the resurrection life. He said in John eleven twenty five, 25, he says, I'm the resurrection of life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And on that third day, <laughs> they believed on him and they resurrected with him after his resurrection. Now, those souls are in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Then when he poured, ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit and ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit, then they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And all those souls up to the present time that have received the Holy Spirit, even Dr. Kinley and all the brethren that passed that was in the school, they're, they're in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And then if you've received the Holy Spirit, you're in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And then those that might, that if Yahweh is in his long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. He said, now there might be some other soul. That's why we keep the doors open. Right. You got new souls coming in. Because, you know, some, you know, I remember well, we, we were in the school and these guys was out there. Oh, 1996 is going to be the end of the world. 
2000 going to be the end of the world. 2010. Yeah, I remember some girls said, well, I just come in here in 2015. I'm glad the world didn't end there. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Hey, this thing will be the end of your world. Or you'll be a new, you know, like I say, you're a new creature. And now he, he can speak through you. You understand? See, and somebody can, you know, you know, we are taught a lot of great stuff in this school. See, uh, okay, so, uh, so yeah, he's the ark. He's the ta- he was the tabernacle. He's the temple. He's the sun. You understand? It's all leading you to the sun. That's what's in the midst. So this fourth dispensation was in the midst when he came as Joshua, the, uh, the son of Nun. Then he came as Joshua Messiah to fulfill it. See, it's in the midst because you got three dispensations before and three after. Now he dies, buries, resurrects, and pours out the Holy Spirit. We're, and then when John sees him, he sees him in the midst of a seven-branch lampstand. And the fourth day of creation was the chain, was, a, was the greater light and the, and, the, and the lesser light. And it was for signs, for days, for years, and for seasons. Because Yash, it's for you to see a son. And Yahshua the Messiah... For they were dead and buried from the fall of Adam, and he's the resurrection and the life. And he changed the season from the dispensation of the law to the age of grace. The all being sinners from the fall of Adam, now you can be without sin through the Holy Spirit. If you're born of the Spirit, there ain't none. You understand? You cannot sin, it says. You understand? So he changed the season. See, and, and in, in, in Revelation, the 12th chapter, read that. See? And see, really, it's the son that made the son. And Dr. Kinley said, I'm going to tell you how great this son is. He said he, it's, it's called wailing and gnashing of teeth lecture. He says this son makes this darker than a million thousand midnights. Now that's powerful. That's the son that made the son. And that's what Paul saw in his vision. I saw a light from heaven. Brighter than the noonday sun. Who would that be? Yahshua Messiah. <laughs> he didn't know. The, they told him he stole his body away. But after Yahshua showed himself to him, you couldn't tell him they stole his body away. He did because he, he appeared to him. You understand? Read Revelation 12 and 1. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Uh-huh. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon on her feet, Dr. Kelly says, that's a, that's a long-legged woman. <laughs> Cold with the sun and the moon under her feet. <laughs> it's a spirit thing there. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. See, and that's the fourth age. See, the sun, the moon under her feet. What? And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Ain't that the fourth day of creation? Sun, moon, and stars? See, he's pouring out the oil, showing that the spiritual body includes the angels, that's the star. The moon's under the feet because you're no longer under the old covenant. See, you're clothed with the sun. Yahshua the Messiah has poured out his Holy Spirit. He, he, he opened up heaven. You understand? And now, uh, that's why this is a heaven. you got the heavenly names. Uh, you understand? That's why the world can't receive it. It's a heavenly gospel. Don't know nothing about it. You understand? And somebody, they, uh, I'm saved. Uh, do you have the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah. What's his name? <laughs> All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit don't know his name. And he's in you. See how the devil tricks you? And he tricked everybody. You understand? And so it, it's a beautiful thing to know Acts 4 and 12 is neither is there salvation in the other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby man can be saved. So we've got a great spiritual body, the uh, Yahshua and Messiah, that you can be a part of. And look, some people think their branch is the best branch. You're just a branch. You ain't the tree. Right. 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 (laughs) Think your branch is better than the next one. You understand? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be in one body. See, you know, there's parts of your body you don't see. Showing there's a lot of souls that's part of the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And we just don't know who. Yahweh doesn't give everybody life, breath, and all. That's his offspring out there. Right. But you need to spring back. You need to be born again. You've got to be speaking the same things. 
That's what 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 says. I beseech you, brethren, and then by the name of Yahshua Messiah, that you speak the same thing. Right. And that there be no divisions among you. Right. See, when he, when he taught, he said, I ain't going to teach you nothing no different than what Moses saw in the prophets right. and, and John right. on the Isle of Patmos. If I did, I'm a liar. Yeah. And I ain't going to say nothing no different. <laughs> you understand? Because we were taught these great things. They will edify you and give you something to look forward to and to come back and get some more because you right. can't tell it all. You know? Right. That's what the next class is for because it's a continuing education. Yes. Holy Spirit's got a lot to teach us. Yes. Right. Well, we love and appreciate you. Yes. It's good to see you. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, the brethren send their love in Springfield. and uh, Yahweh willing, if you come, we'll see you in Lansing. See? Uh, well, if you learn anything, you thank Yahweh Elam That's through his right. son, Yahshua Messiah. Yeah. See, he gave us our physical body, and so he's going to give us our eternal life and mortal glorified body. That's the right. good news. Mm. See, the life don't end with the, when this one does. All praise going to Yahweh Elam through his son, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Lewis. And that does bring our conclusions, a conclusion to our lecture this afternoon. Uh, we will have children's class at 115. We're going to go outside, first of all, because it's cold in here. And second, because we only got three kids, we're going to go in nature and do some stuff outside. So at 115, the kids will be outside for children's class. Um, and our classes are held here every Sunday from 11 to 1. We will have class here next Sunday in person. And we have our classes on Zoom every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. to uh, 10, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our class is supported by donations, and we do appreciate your donations. May we all stand to be dismissed. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before all time, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. hallelujah.